Melissa Taylor Stewart, an administrator in the Office of Equity, Engagement, and Partnerships, and I'd like to welcome you to Parent Connection. Parent Connection is an exciting collaboration between Parent University and LBUSD Superintendent Dr. Jill Baker. Each month, Dr. Baker will engage with parents and members of our community and lead a dialogue of current district issues with a focus on the learning, acceleration, and support plan. Tonight, Dr. Jill Baker will be sharing ways in which LBUSD centers wellness in our classrooms and the extended uh, school community. She will be joined by Mr. Justin Grayson, LBUSD's Chief Communications and Community Engagement Officer. Justin will lead us in a very important discussion about parent and community engagement. Before we get started, I'd like to remind you of an upcoming Parent University workshop. Supporting our students in the LGBTQIA community. This workshop will be held next Tuesday, Tuesday, December 14th from 6 to 7 p.m. And it will be live streamed on the district's YouTube channel. Please join us. As you listen to the presentation tonight, please feel free to ask questions or share comments using the link in the YouTube frame. If your question is not answered tonight, don't worry because someone from our team will reach out to you directly. So please remember when you ask your questions to include your contact information. Thanks for that. To help us all relax and get comfortable, our own Amy Love from the Office of Student Support Services will guide us in a short relaxation activity. Let's welcome Ms. Amy Love. Thanks, Alyssa. Good evening, families, parents, and caregivers. It is so wonderful to be with you this evening. My name is Amy Love, and I'm a social-emotional learning coach with our school district. One of the most meaningful parts of my job is having the opportunity to teach and practice self-care with our students, our teachers, administrators, and with you, our parents and caregivers who are such valuable partners in the education process. So I want to invite you to think about the next few moments as a kind of soft landing for us as we gather here this evening for this meeting and as a gift of time for yourself. So let's get into it. Let's invite our bodies, let's position our bodies in a way that feels uniquely supportive um, of our body abilities and body types. So if you're sitting in a chair, you might invite your back to really lean into the back of your chair. If you're driving, don't get too comfortable. <laughs> Make sure you're still paying close attention. Um, if you might be walking while you're doing um, this activity, uh, pay attention to the soles of your feet and the surroundings around you. I'm gonna lead you through a brief body scan that you can do anywhere, anytime, whether you're caring for your, um, for your children at home, whether you're at your desk at work, um, wherever you find yourself in the market, these um, body practices can be done just about anywhere. And we're gonna start with um, a place in our body that tends to hold a lot of tension and that's the muscles around our eyes. We're spending more and more time these days on screens which can really strain our eyes. So I wanna invite you to pour your kind attention into your eyes right now. And we're gonna do a little bit of eye yoga. So I want to invite you to lift and lower your eyebrows a couple of times like this. Now, you have to be careful with this particular exercise when you're out in public because people might think you're flirting with them. So be careful with this one. <laughs> but just lifting and lowering those eye muscles above our eyes really sends this message to the muscles around our eyes that it's safe to soften. You can even, if you're wearing glasses, take them off. And I don't know about you, but sometimes the bridge of my nose can get kind of tired. And then you can tighten the muscles of your eyes and then let them relax. Tighten the muscles of your eyes and let them relax. Do that a couple of times. And then these muscles right between your eyebrows, tense those up like you're squinting to hold them tight 
and then let them fall loose. Let's do that a couple more times. Tighten those muscles between the eyebrows and then let them go loose. And that's easy eye yoga. You can do it almost anywhere, but I'm gonna warn you again about the flirting part. Now let's bring our attention to our jaw. Our jaws, y'all know, can hold a lot of tension. Sometimes even, I'll tell you a secret about myself, the older I get, is sometimes I even wake up at night and I'm clenching my jaw. <laughs> so um, let's just swivel our jaw back and forth a couple times like that, your lower jaw. And I know I look super weird on YouTube right now. It's okay, it's okay though. <laughs> and maybe even open your jaw a couple of times. Yeah, and you can feel those muscles right here just relaxing a little bit. We deserve that, parents and caregivers. We work so hard. Let's now come to our shoulders. You all know that saying that our elders, our wise elders would say, oh, I feel like the weight of the world is on my shoulders. That's because our shoulders are so sensitive to our experience. They they tense up with um, any slight um stressors in our lives. So I'm going to invite you to lift your shoulders up toward your ears, lift them up, and then just relax them. And do that a couple more times, lifting your shoulders up toward your ears, and then let gravity, just let your shoulders hang. Lift them up a couple more times. You can do this while you're standing in line at the market, while you're helping your, your children with their homework. Even when you're at, at work yourself, no matter what your work is, you can stretch out your shoulders, maybe even roll them back and roll them forward. Wonderful. The last thing we're going to do, super counterintuitive in the culture that we live in here, we're going to focus on the muscles in our bellies. You've also probably heard that saying, what's your gut tell you or trust your gut because the muscles in our in our stomachs are really sensitive also to our lived experiences and when we're stressed out when we're frustrated or worried those muscles contract so right now i'm going to ask you to do something that's not really popular but i'm going to ask you with the next couple of out breaths breathing in deeply and then breathing out and as you breathe out let the muscles of your belly go soft let the muscles in your belly just hang. I know we're like really into a tight core in our culture, but just for these moments, nobody's watching. <laughs> um, just let those muscles go really soft. So breathing in deeply. And with that exhale, allowing the muscles in the belly to soften as much as possible. We'll work on our core later, but right now just relaxing. Wonderful. And for this last moment, just from the very top of your head to the soles of your feet, gently invite your whole body to just relax into this moment, creating this soft landing for us to be together as parents and caregivers. I know folks have, um, have wonderful presentations for us this evening and welcoming us all here, uh, hopefully feeling a little more relaxed than we were. I'm inviting you, if I run into you at the market or the post office or at schools, um, to be doing these exercises that offer just a little bit of relief, a little reprieve to our busy, um, our busy days. Thank you for this opportunity to share that quick relaxation tip with you. And um, I'm handing it off to whoever's next in the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Thank you for reminding us to take a few minutes to check in with our bodies. It's so important. And I'm so relaxed right now. So hopefully our parents and caregivers are feeling a bit more relaxed as well. We're going to switch gears and get ready for our presentation. And please just reminder, ask questions, share some comments in the uh, YouTube link in the in the frame. So now we're going to welcome our superintendent, Dr. Jill Baker, to share some very important information with us. Dr. Baker, thank you. Good evening, everyone, to parents and caregivers who are out there. I am so excited to connect with you again this evening and to be joined by Justin Grayson, who following me is going to do a, an engagement activity with you. And I just want to start by thanking Amy Love. Amy Love spends her days planning and working with teachers and staff around their well-being 
and thinking about students. She spends time in classrooms, helping teachers to connect with students and to bring wellness to classrooms. She participates in our curriculum development that integrates, which I'm gonna talk about in a few minutes, that integrates wellness and social emotional learning right into the daily routines that students are doing in our classrooms. And so thank you, Amy, for helping us to start on such a really nice note this evening. I wanna remind parents and caregivers and those of you who are watching about the connection to the Google form that is there on the YouTube page, right under the link that you use to get on tonight's live stream. That's important and you heard Alyssa remind you that even if your question isn't answered tonight, the team in equity engagement and partnerships will get back to you. And I'll share a few things at the end of tonight's meeting that are coming as a result of our last meeting. So I wanna spend just a couple of minutes going into purpose and setting the stage for tonight's parent connection. Many of you might've been here the last time we had over 400 live viewers for our first parent connection in November. So hopefully we have that many tonight or even more. But the purpose of the parent connection, um, the superintendent parent connection is threefold. It's to create opportunities for human connection between parents or caregivers, myself as superintendent and other district staff, it's to provide district-wide information for you. You come here to learn something about the work of the school district that enhances your access and your connection to what's going on at schools. And then importantly, engage in two-way communication with you that informs our continuous improvement efforts. And even though being on Zoom doesn't feel the same as being in person, I'll end tonight sharing a few things that we're doing as a result of last month's session. Also just wanna share what I shared in the first meeting this year. And I just wanna keep repeating this, make some really strong assumptions about you all as caregivers and parents. You are your children's first teachers. We, I come with the assumption that you want your child, each of you wants your child to have a school experience that's characterized by high expectations that we hold for your children and care. Also that students' lives we know the research tells us, and my experience tells me that students' lives are enhanced when parents and caregivers are involved. And lastly, that a, whole, a homeschool connection fostered by teachers and all of the staff at a school positively contributes to student success. So those are assumptions that I bring into this space um, and think about each time I'm getting ready for the parent connection. So what will we focus on this year? We're going to stay consistent this year so that you know what to expect when you come into this space and that we're pre prepared around several different topics. We're really hoping that after the first of the year, we'll be able to convene in person and we'll still stay, stay with these focus areas. The learning acceleration and support plan, which is a big deal across Long Beach Unified School District. It has funding attached to it. It has initiatives and major areas of work um, and I'll, I'll talk in depth about Pillar 2 tonight. Also, really want to encourage you to make that connection to schools. So in each of our sessions, I'm going to pose some questions that I think would be helpful for you to ask when you're interacting with teachers or counselors or principals or other staff out at schools. And then lastly, with our new Chief of Communications and Community Engagement in Justin Grayson, we're working on a whole new strategy around communication and community engagement. You're going to help us build that through your participation in Parent Connection. And so you'll hear more about that as Justin shares with you tonight. So let's get to it. The first thing I wanna remind you of is the purpose of the Learning Acceleration and Support Plan. This is a multi-year plan that Long Beach Unified, the team at Long Beach Unified has built with some really important things in mind. It's around pillars, and those pillars describe how we are working to enhance the core classroom experience for all students. When I say core classroom experience, that means what every child and older student youth experiences in their classroom. We want to enhance that classroom experience, and, and we talked in the last session about pillar one, which is really focused on the classroom experience. We also wanna provide academic acceleration, intervention, and support. 
support student well-being and social emotional learning, which will be our topic for this evening. And then we're making investments starting this year, major investments in school and classroom infrastructure, things like the furniture that students sit in in a classroom and really thinking about how to bring that into the modern age and to match up to how teachers teach and what we want for our students' experience to be in those classrooms. So that's the purpose. If you weren't here the last time, the next slide is just quick guidance on how to get to the district's learning acceleration and support plan. Right from the homepage of our district website, you'll see on the left, there's a link to the learning acceleration and support plan. On the right, you'll see that plan translated into Spanish in Khmer. And then below it, some of the fiscal resources that describe how the school district is spending its money in service to this plan. So you might remember, and if it's new to you, you'll get a little glimpse that this plan has four pillars. The blue pillar you see, academic acceleration and support. Social emotional well-being, which I'm going to spend some time talking about and sharing with you tonight. Engagement and voice, that's adult engagement, community engagement, and student voice and then infrastructure and capital for the future. We're taking advantage of the funds that we've received from the federal government, as well as our local funds to build these pillars in a way that transforms Long Beach Unified as we know it. And so tonight's topic is going to be an overview of our approach to wellness, which includes a focus on social emotional well-being. Amy Love started us with one aspect of wellness in Long Beach Unified School District that's nested in the classroom work that we do. And it's also, as she shared, it's important for adults to have access to wellness as well. And so tonight, as part of the conversation around wellness and social emotional learning, I'm going to touch on three aspects of our work, including showing you a quick video um, from some work that we're doing in our high schools. Those three areas are focusing on an overview of the elementary work that is around integrated social emotional learning. I'm going to tell you a little bit about that and, and do some sharing. I want to share with you the work in our middle schools that is around building stronger restorative practices. And then lastly, share with you an initiative across all of our high schools that is around wellness or care centers and what that looks like for our high school students. As I, before I share with you the different level approaches, I, there's a document here in front of you. And when you access these slides, there's a live link at the bottom to access what we call our understandings continuum. It's already available on the district website. If you're sitting on the website and want to click under U or on the U in the alpha index, and you're going to see a multi-page document. The screenshot you have is one of those pages. This U6, as we call it, is one piece of a very important puzzle in our district. It's the puzzle that we think of as our vision for classrooms. And we call it the understandings continuum because it's developing understandings around specific areas of work in classrooms. So tonight I'm gonna to focus on the slide or the, the U that you see, the understanding that you see, which is U6. And I just wanna pause there because this is a really important piece of our classroom vision or what educators call an instructional vision. It's so important that when you look to the left and you see all those puzzle pieces, U6 sits in the middle of our instructional vision, the middle of that puzzle. It starts with the, um, a foundational belief. And I'm just gonna quickly read that. I have to look down to read it at my U6 that's in front of me. All students and communities come with cultural and linguistic assets and deserve to be treated with dignity fairness, respect, and unconditional positive regard. In a warm, demanding learning environment, every student matters and needs to feel that they do. All students can learn and achieve at high levels, and we have a responsibility for their success. 
confronting our own bias is important work for us to do if we are to truly set high expectations for students. And so with that foundational belief, this aspect of our instructional vision focuses on creating a classroom atmosphere where teachers deliberately balance caring relationships with high expectations. They have to go together. Caring relationships without high expectations isn't a recipe for student success. But care and high expectations and supports provides a foundation for a safe learning environment that values diversity, trust, and respectful communication. So what I'm gonna talk about tonight are examples of how we are aiming to enhance or get better at the instructional vision that we have for our classrooms. With U6, the relationships and the care and high expectations at the center. So let me tell you a little bit more about that. When we think about our classrooms, we think about social emotional learning, the learning that students that we want students to do in our classrooms to um, grow and to learn the skills that many of us as adults have. We, we probably didn't know that we were developing them, that we developed them some at home, some when we were in kindergarten and many as we grew as students in our, in our school experience. But we've gotten more explicit over time about the skills that we want students to develop. And so when we say social, emotional learning and well-being, we're actually referring to a specific set of skills. This is based on research. When you, when you access these slides, you'll actually be able to look at the website for CASEL. CASEL stands for Collaborative for Academic, Social, and Emotional Learning. And CASEL is known throughout the nation as the research entity and guidance for thinking about developing students' social emotional learning and well being. And in their research, they've identified five areas that should be taught as part of an instructional day, not necessarily separate, although sometimes there's a specific lesson around social emotional learning. But as you'll hear me talk about, in our classrooms, we aim to have a teacher integrate aspects of social emotional learning with the stories that they're reading, with the math that they're teaching, with the history that is part of their curriculum. Those skills, and you can see them right in the middle of this slide, those skills are developing the skill of self-awareness and self-management and responsible decision-making and relationship skills and social, social awareness. They're taught in our district in a developmentally appropriate way. So that means in a transitional kindergarten classroom or in a preschool classroom, these skills are taught appropriately for four-year-olds and five-year-olds. And in a high school classroom, they're taught in an advanced way that an older youth can understand. But they're taught throughout our, our TK through 12 and, and actually our preschools as well. So let me tell you a little bit about what that looks like across the levels in our, in our school district. And I wanna focus on those three levels and feature some things that tell you about the work of our schools in elementary schools, what middle schools are working on, and how we're working on social emotional learning and well-being in high schools. So those of you who are elementary age parents, or you, or you may have um, students at multiple levels or are a caregiver to elementary students, our work over the last year and a half and going forward into the next couple of years has been to build or is to build an integrated social emotional learning experience. That means that students often don't know that they're doing and learning social emotional skills because it's part of their regular school day. Most often in an elementary classroom when students are learning the skills of reading and writing and listening and speaking, there's an integration of social emotional learning skills. So they might be learning about self-management or a listening skill while they're talking with their peers about a story or discussing a topic that is part of their curriculum. This allows students to learn those skills in an environment where they're also able to practice them. One of the resources that we use is called Harmony. It's actually a curriculum, a social emotional learning curriculum. We have a number of other resources. And so what students experience is built by a, a district unit 
in our unit guides and our teaching, our lesson guides that allows a teacher to bring in, um, as I said, the listening skills and the social emotional learning right into their classrooms. So in addition to helping students develop healthy routines that we believe as part of becoming healthy adults, it also helps them to build listening skills and to really think about their own emotions and to regulate as age appropriately, um, to foster healthy peer friendships and relationships, and to process their emotions and develop empathy. Um, I linked in the slides that will be posted to our website, harmonysel.org. So if you're interested in looking more about that specific program, if you have an elementary student, you'll have the link to that, or you can look at it now if you're on your computer. So if you have an elementary student, good to ask them, how are you developing your listening skills? How are you learning about relationships? How are you building community? So you see a few things from Harmony that are conversations and collaborations and community builders that all take place integrated into the experience that our elementary students have in their classroom. Thinking about our middle schools, they also experience integration in the curriculum where a teacher might be using some of the social emotional opportunity for social emotional learning with their content in math or in English or in history. But this year and for the next several years, our middle schools are working to develop stronger restorative practices. Restorative practices are a way of communicating between adults and students and helping to students to create to communicate with one another in ways that in some cases restores harm, builds a good collaboration among students, and has a very strong impact on community, classroom community, as well as um, school community. And so the work that our middle schools are doing includes building circle processes. So you actually see an image of this slide of what it looks like to hold a circle. This can be a circle that talks about a topic. It can be a circle that talks to a student and allows a student to express something that's going on in their life and to seek, seek peer support. It also is a way that middle school teachers are, are learning about having conflict resolution in their classrooms. Sometimes the, the restorative practices are, are used outside of classrooms as well. If there's been harm done, if a student has had a fight in some cases, they're able to use restorative practices, not necessarily as the consequences, but as a way to restore harm and to really bring students and adults into relationship as they resolve, resolve things. Restorative practices do not take the place of consequences. And in many cases, um, a student, if there's, a, if there's harm done, there may be a consequence that goes with that, but we also want a student to be able to come back into their learning space we call it re-entry and have a way that adults and other students know how to bring that student back into their learning space. And so if you have a middle school student, we have some teachers that are coaching other teachers and, and several schools that are practicing new ways of building restorative practices. Um, and we look forward to the next couple of years of moving this work across all of our of all of our middle schools. Restorative practices do take place in elementary schools and high schools, but this is a specialized initiative in our middle schools because this is an area where middle schools have really struggled, struggled with suspensions and struggled with other aspects of development that we think by focusing on restorative practices, we are going to lessen suspensions and have better attendance for students and have students that really learn the skills that they need to, to be successful high school students and successful adults. And so my last feature tonight is to tell you a little bit about, to share about our high school wellness or care centers. You might know them as the Dragon Den or the Bruin Cave or the Care Center. Um, students are in the process of naming their wellness or their care centers at their high schools, and they have been a part of how we designed the high school wellness centers. We incorporated student voice um, last year as we worked with many of our students, even through the pandemic, of what they would need to feel comfortable coming back to school and to support them in coming back to school. So we've made an investment in every school having a high school wellness or care center. 
And you can see the things on the slide that those care centers have been designed to support. They're a place for drop-in where students, and you're gonna see some beautiful images of what those spaces look like very quickly. They're a place for students to access immediate resources and in, in this form of short-term counseling, to talk to either a social worker or a counselor or a psychologist who's, who runs the, the wellness center about resources that their family or they may need outside of what's available in, in the wellness center. They're a place that has activities and materials and one of our students' favorite things, snacks. Um, and so a place where students have loved designing with their, the adults around them and that they are loving. In fact, today I heard that fifth, there were 5,700, 5,700 visits to our wellness centers across the district during the month of November. 5,700 visits to the wellness center. So we know we're tracking our data and we're looking at how, the, how each of those centers are used. We also know that students are accessing them regularly across schools and that makes us feel, feel really good. Our staff is very proud of the work that they're doing and the supports that they can provide for students. I actually recently was visiting, that's fine, thank you for moving the slides. I was actually visiting wellness centers recently and one of the things I was just um, really, it warmed my heart to watch happen is at one of the, at one of the wellness centers, um, we were standing inside and a group of students came to the wellness center to seek the social worker who is the staff member who runs that wellness center. And like good adults do, we stepped back to create space for the students who were coming to visit, but we could overhear the conversation. And the conversation was not that the students who were there needed support. They had come seeking the social worker on behalf of a friend who was out on campus and experiencing something really difficult for them. And so the sign went up on that wellness center door, I'll be right back, the social worker put a sign up and off she went out on campus to seek out the student who the peers had come to seek support for. So just lots of good work going on among our, our wellness centers. And here you can see a few of the images um, you can see students sitting on the floor, students sitting on bean bags in comfortable chairs. These centers have been designed with students in mind. They're peaceful. Many of them have fountains. They have calming centers. They have coloring books. They have arts activity. They have Play-Doh, things that students have asked to have. And they have snacks um, as a place where students really want to spend their time when they, when they have time on campus or when they need specific support. So we have a one minute video that's just going to quickly introduce you to that staff. The staff you're gonna see in this video are either psychologists, social workers, or counselors, each of whom went through an interview process and was hired to run the school's wellness center. So let's take a look at these amazing folks who are out in the field caring for our students. Great, thank you, what, what great images. I also just wanna mention that Poly High School had a care center and Jordan High School had a wellness center. Um, and we were able actually to use their expertise in the, the original design and then work with our students and other practitioners to ensure that our wellness centers were really the right space created for students. 
And so before I take some of the questions that are coming in, I just wanna offer a few suggested questions that you can ask at your students or the students who you care for school to connect wellness and social emotional learning back at the school building level. I shared the elementary feature about integrated social emotional learning that's part of the daily curriculum that teachers teach, talked about restorative practices that we're building across middle schools and then the wellness centers as one of the features for our high school. So I want you to have some questions when you're at your school that you can ask a teacher. If the teacher doesn't know the answer that you can talk to a counselor or an administrator at your school. And so you can ask, how is student wellness and social emotional learning and support being delivered at the school? We have beyond the things that I shared, which are district initiatives, many schools have taken these ideas and developed their own version. So you might find that your student goes to an elementary school that has a special room designed around wellness where students can visit or a teacher librarian who's created a space in the library that is built upon this. So ask, how is student wellness and social emotional learning and support being delivered at my school or at this school? Also be able to ask with th these things in mind, how can I access support for my students? So if you're a high school parent, you know there's a wellness center at your school. You could suggest it to your student. It's also something that you can ask when you're at the school site. How does my student get to the wellness center? Or can I, can I check it out while you're on campus? And then last the question I thought would be helpful is just what kinds of enrichment or wellness activities exist at the school? Schools have built their own programs around mindfulness. So what Amy Love shared with you, they've developed ideas around mindfulness, wellness, enrichment activities around art therapy and other ways of engaging students based on what students or parents have asked for. So ask about enrichment or wellness activities at this, at this specific school. So great to connect with you tonight around wellness and social emotional learning. I hope you have some new ideas to take away. You have a better understanding of the district work. I think of it as a 30,000 foot perspective on what we're doing across the district and some ideas about what social emotional learning actually is in our classrooms. And so I think they're collecting questions either. Alyssa, are you gonna ask some questions tonight? Yes, there are some questions coming in, Dr. Baker. Our parents are interested in the family resource centers and are there any plans to ex expand more, have more? Yes, we have had family resource centers. This is our fourth or fifth year of having the version of family resource centers that we have right now. And we have expanded the services of our family resource centers. If you're interested in that, click on F on our alpha index. You can see the services that exist for family resource centers. And we have a, we have a whole team in the district that provides support for family resource centers. Also, families can ask at their school. You can, you can have a student ask in the wellness center, you know, how do I get family resource center resources? But we have expanded with additional staff, social work staff and counseling staff into our family resource centers. Thank you, thank you. Another parent is asking about Harmony, um, a little bit more about Harmony and is it used at all the elementary schools? Great question. So Harmony is a research-based model around social emotional learning that we were um, introduced to a few years ago. When we first in introduced it into our elementary schools, it was primarily used by counselors. But as we learned more about social emotional learning and realized we need to integrate this with the curriculum so it's not something separate, Harmony is one of the resources that we now use in classrooms, not just by a counselor, but by teachers, but it's one of many resources. But Harmony, Har the Harmony resources are an anchor because they're, they're a curriculum that has grade level specific activities and resources that have been built in to the, the lessons and the units that are taught in all of our elementary classrooms. Thank you, thank you. Um, the next question, I kind of kind of have a little knowledge about this one, is peer mentoring available at the high school wellness centers? I know I visited um, Mr. Gray over at Polly, and they have a great peer mentoring program over there. So, Yes, Polly actually has a training program through a class that Mr. Gray teaches that actually teaches the skills of peer mentoring, and students get course credit for it. It's a class that they take as part of their pathway. 
Other wellness centers have different kinds of peer mentoring programs. They have peer mediation programs. They, they use restorative circles, which sometimes are student led where there's a, a problem that they're trying to solve through um, peer interaction. And so there are different versions of mentoring program. There's not, a, there's not a district mentoring program, but there are many opportunities and not just through the wellness center, but through other resources that connect to agencies like YMCA, Big Brother, Big Sister. And so um, asking about that in a wellness center or asking a counselor at an office is a way for a parent to, perhaps if they want their student to have a mentor, we have organizations like Long Beach Blast um, that could be accessible through a counselor or through a school administrator. Thank you, Dr. Baker. So parents are really uh, grateful that the wellness centers exist and their students are able to get help. But one parent's asking, will they be notified if their student attends a wellness center or has any issues related to needing to go to a wellness center? Will the parent be notified? Sure, well, the, the general wellness center, you can think of it like a classroom, but a specialized classroom. It's a place and space um, that students, some students can go in and they, they can even do their homework in a wellness center and just, get a sense of calm. If there are um, things that would always require a parent notification, um, an assessment, a counseling conversation, work with a psychologist, then that wellness staff would be contacting families, not just if they visit, but if there's something that requires parent consent, the staff is trained. They are all credentialed staff, either a counselor, a psychologist, or a social worker with a, a specialized credential that knows when parent consent is required and they would absolutely access a parent for consent for anything that it's required for. Thank you. We have another question uh, regarding donating to the basic needs closet. How can that happen? Yes. So on their own, many of our wellness centers and also beyond wellness centers, we have um, the Cabrillo Closet, Wilson's Bruin Den has, a, has um, materials that are available for students. What a great opportunity if you're a member of a community and have things that you know all of us need for personal hygiene or new clothing that maybe doesn't have any logos or anything on it, but that you want students to have access to, contact your nearest wellness center. They're collecting everything from shampoo to toothpaste and toothbrushes, other personal hygiene that, that is sometimes very expensive for students, as well as um, new and gently used clothes to offer to our students. They do it in such a beautiful way so students don't have to feel uncomfortable asking for those materials. There's not a, a checkout or anything. It's, it's just offered to students and they know that that's something that they can access. So anybody that's involved in a business or a nonprofit um, or wants to, to, to donate, if you don't know how to get in touch with the school, then contact one of us on this call or call the Equity Engagement and Partnerships Office and we'll figure out how to get those donations to a wellness center. Thank you. That's such a beautiful resource for our families. It's really nice. And I think right now that's it, Dr. Baker. I'm sure there'll be more questions coming, coming up and I'll let you know when they do. All right. Well, so fun to connect with all of you who are out there. I can just feel your energy and glad to pass off to my, my colleague, Justin Grayson, who's our Chief Communication and Community Engagement Officer, to lead you in the next few minutes of our meeting. Take it away. Thank you, Dr. Baker, much appreciated. And I am happy to, to be here on the, the Zoom with you all um, or the YouTube Live. Uh, so let's talk about communications. Um, it was great to be on the first, um, the first version of this Parent Connection, at least my first version of the Parent Connection because I'm one of the newbies here to Long Beach Unified. Um, but as we have these meetings, you know, we want to hear from you, and we also want to just learn all the things that we can do to get better at communicating with you. Um, and so that's what we're here for. That's why the communications department is a part of this meeting, because it is the community who can tell us what we can do to be better communicators when it comes to getting information out um, to you and hearing what you have to say to make us a better school district. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. I've got a couple slides that I'd like to share with you and, and let's have some fun. Uh, so here we go. 
All right, so I think we're shared here. Um, can I get a confirm that my screen is is live? All right, I think we're good. All right, so when it comes to Long Beach Unified communications and engagement, I wanted to go over a couple of our priorities. Um, we did go over these a little bit last time. Um, I added a couple things, and, and I think you'll appreciate them. Um, and keep in mind, uh, please submit your questions. We'll have, we'll have an opportunity to have some two-way communication in a little bit, but feel free to submit your questions now if you have any for me and other members of the communications team. But let's just jump into it. When it comes to our communications and, and community engagement priorities, and let me just say, my department includes the, it's, it's the Office of Communications and Community Engagement, so you may hear us refer to it as OCCE or the Office of Communications, but we've got our media and marketing teams. They're the ones who are doing such a great job putting this, uh, this Zoom on tonight, um, and they do a lot of our videos, our social media, um, and all the things that it takes to market uh, our district to the community. We also have our Public Information Office. They're the ones that when you see anything about Long Beach Unified in the newspaper, a lot of times that has gone through our um, public information office. We also have, as Dr. Baker mentioned earlier, our Office of Engagement, Community Engagement and Partnerships, um, which does just such a great job. They're responsible for the parent university and all the different things that, um, that come when it, you know, with community engagement and, and really engaging the people that that make this work so possible, and also our community partners. So the different businesses, the different uh, organizations in our community, nonprofit organizations, um, also our, our clergy and our churches in the community. All of these different entities are a part of how we can make the district the best possible. Um, and, and the more people we have engaged with us, the more uh, I mean, it's a personal belief, but I believe that the more people that are engaged with what the district is doing, the better our students will achieve. Um, as we all hear, we've all heard the phrase, it takes a village, and that's what we're trying to accomplish here. We're trying to build that village of all of our community members working together for the sake of student achievement. So let's jump in. Sorry, I know I, 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 that was a quick sidebar, but let's go over to the engagement priorities. So the first one is kind of an overarching priority, strengthening the value and usefulness of LBUSD's overall communications. That's pretty self-explanatory. We just wanna make sure that we're doing whatever we can to communicate with you, the members of the community, much better. Um, number two, ensuring that our communications practices are inclusive and accessible to diverse communities. Um, I've heard not just here in Long Beach, from, but from many school districts that there sometimes is uh, what is seen as a disparity between um, a few different things. One of them might be how different schools are represented. So, you as community members may see that one school seems to be represented in a lot of our videos or, or may seem to get certain things that other schools don't get. Well, here in our communications department, we have a goal to make sure that all of our schools are represented equally um, and that the schools that have been uh, historically underrepresented get that reputation, uh, that representation that they deserve. Um, and also when it comes to language accessibility, as you've seen, we've got, um, translators, we have interpretation services, we're trying to do everything we can to ensure that no matter what language you speak, no matter what type of ability or disability that you may have, that we're going to be inclusive and include you, and make sure that you have access to all the things that we um, that we put out. And number three, we want to develop and improve relationships and partnerships with local businesses, community members and groups, parents and community leaders to magnify our message. Like I said earlier, it takes a village. So the more people we have involved in the things that we're doing, um, the better off we all are, especially our students and our staff and our teachers. So we wanna just make sure that we're spreading our message throughout our community and also that we're opening up our doors so that our community and our business partners can speak back with us. <clears throat> so this, the next slide is gonna be about some of our projects. So I didn't talk about this last time, but I wanna just give a quick little it's almost like a peek into the work that we're doing and the things that are gonna be coming up soon. So for all about 100 of you all that are watching right now, um, 80 plus that are watching, you guys are getting a sneak peek into some of the things that we're working on, which is pretty cool. Um, so one of them, we're assessing and strengthening the Long Beach Unified brand. So we have a lot of discussions and we could talk all day about what brand actually is, but 
you know, just a quick thing. Whenever I say the word brand, one of the first things that people say is Nike or Starbucks, right? Um, they all have really cool logos and they have logos that we see, but brand is a lot more than a logo. A brand is how does it make you feel when you hear the words Long Beach Unified School District? Do you feel like, yes, that is a place where I want to send my kids or that's a place that communicates with me well, or that's a place that their customer service is great. Right? We all know that Disney and Nordstrom are known for their customer service. Long Beach Unified wants to be known for certain things like customer service, like high achievement, like great communications. And so we're going to do an assessment and we're going to strengthen that brand. Number two, redesigning all of our LBUSD school websites, our district homepage, and our bond facilities upgrade sites. So those that's going to include about 90 different websites that we are going to break down and build back up. We're really excited about that. It's going to be a lot of work, but our team is already hard at work in trying to rebuild those websites. And, you know, when it comes to those questions or that feedback that we're asking you to give us, feel free to let us know if there are some things that you think are essential when it comes to what a district school website or our, or our district main page looks like. We're really um, curious about, about hearing your feedback on that. <clears throat> Number three. We want to create videos and social media content that are relevant and timely for the parents and the families in Long Beach. Now, when it comes to those videos and social media, we do a lot. And, and you'll, you'll always hear the name Chris Itzen, and we've got our media and marketing team, and they do a great job. But we want to make sure that what we're putting out is relevant to you. We want to make sure that when you see our pod, when you listen to our podcast, or when you see our videos, that all of those things are something that that, that resonate with you. And if not, let us know. Let us know that, that you know, certain things either did or didn't resonate, and we'll make sure that we continuously adjust to get better. Number four, we want to invest in additional methods to make two-way communications better between Long Beach Unified and our families. And so that involves us doing things like what you see today. It involves us investing in new products or services or software that's going to allow you, the members of the community, to, to get in touch with us, whether it's our board members, whether it's our administrators, whether it's teachers, and the website is one of those options, but we want to make sure that we're giving you all better options and that we're doing our due diligence on our end and doing our job to make sure that, that you can communicate with us better. So there's going to be some, uh, some new things coming out. Obviously, everything can't happen overnight, but we want to make sure that, that we are prioritizing that. <clears throat> so let's have some fun. This is the moment when you all take your phones and you go into your camera app and you point it directly at the screen. And the reason why we're going to do this, one of those investments, and I'm going to go back I'm not going to go back in the slide because I want you all to take your phones and scan that QR code or go to the website slido.com, S-L-I-D-O.com, and put in that code. While you're doing that, I want to just say <clears throat> one of the things that we're going to do when I talked about that investment is <clears throat> we want to do a really broad survey of all of the members of our community to find out <clears throat> are we communicating with you in the best way possible. Do you have any feedback on how we can communicate better? What are the methods that we communicate with you that you like and that you don't like? There's also going to be some questions around just how you feel about the district as a whole, or how do you feel about your school? Are there things that we can do when it comes to the district office or your school or our customer service that can be better? So we want to really get your honest, honest feedback about the things that we can do from a communication perspective and just as a district whole perspective how can we do better? We want to get your perspective on that. And this is this is kind of like a first miniature step in that process. So I hope all of you have joined in the slide. Uh, I'm sorry, the Slido. This is going to be pretty fun. So all you have to do, I'll say it one more time, you open up your camera app and you just point it at the screen and it should take you to a link. All right. If you're not, if you're choosing not to do it, that's fine. You'll get to see some of the feedback, but I would love for all of you to be included in this. All right, I'm going to go to the next slide, and the next slide is actually starting the process. It's going to show you the first question. So as soon as I click on the next slide, it's going to activate inside of your app. So I think I've given you enough time to go in there, but um, we'll give you the first one is a practice, and I think it's a good one. So here we go. The first one is, what are you most grateful for? Now, this isn't ha doesn't have anything to do with our communications, but this is just a practice run, and I want to know what you're most grateful for. And what we'll see as you put in your, your feedback, 
we're going to start seeing it populate into a word cloud. This is going to be pretty neat. So again, scan the QR code or go to slido.com and type in 123789. You don't have to put the space in there. So just, and you don't have to put the, the hashtag or the pound sign either. It'll ask you uh, what the code is. Just put in 123789. So what are you most grateful for? You only have 25 characters, so keep it short, but I want to know what you're most grateful for. And I'll give it about a minute, and then what I'll the next click that I do, it'll show some of the feedback. What are you most grateful for? For me, I'll answer the question so that there's no dead air. What am I most grateful for? I'm grateful for family. I'm grateful for friends. And I'm grateful for this district that seems to really want to prioritize equity, and excellence. It's really amazing to work for a district with leaders that prioritize equity and that are doing things. They're not just talking to talk, they're walking the walk. So I know that's longer than 25 characters, but those are the things that I'm grateful for. Uh, let's see. Let's see what some of the feedback looks like. So check it out. What you see on the screen right now is actually feedback from you all who are in the, who are actually in the meeting right now. And we see, I still see it moving. I still see more things popping up. Somebody typed in one, two, three, seven, eight, nine um, into the <laughs> what you're grateful for, which I think is awesome. That means you're grateful for this little survey right here. But let's see what else we have. We've got quality education. And, and if you know anything about word clouds, the ones that are the biggest mean that everybody, that's those are the ones that have uh, been put in the most. So family has been put in by a lot of people. Health, and there's my family. So both of those are, are really popular. Um, let's see what else. Humor, patience, my children, family and friends, two devices. That's cool. Grateful for two devices. So if someone is, there's a tech person in here that's, that's, that's uh, excited about that. Family health jobs, students being back in schools. I love it. I love it. So I'm going to go ahead. If you go ahead and finish up, if you haven't done it yet, but if, you, if you're not in here, you see that this is pretty neat that we're doing this live. So go ahead and, and hurry up and get in there. Um, again, either scan the QR code with your camera app or go to slido.com and type in 123789. Looks like everyone's about done. Oh, I like that one. Weekends. That's a really cool one. Um, trusted organizations. Love that. Patience, humor, and love. You guys are very sentimental, and I, and I really value that about this group here. All right, so I'm gonna go on to the next one. So now we're gonna get into a little bit more about our communications needs and wants and the things that, that the, the ideas that you guys have around how the district is communicating with you. All right, so here we go. We're gonna to go to the next one and you don't have to do anything as long as you've already pressed submit in your app, it's gonna automatically go to the next question. All right, so this one is, please check all of the boxes that describe the ways you currently receive information from the Long Beach Unified District Office or from your local schools. Okay, now if you don't have students in the district, you can still go in here and, and put in some ways that you've interacted with Long Beach Unified in the past. Don't worry about it if you don't have students in our district, but we're, we're really happy to have you anyway. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read through all of these because we do have translators on the line. And so I wanna make sure our translators and our interpreters are, are also saying what we have here. But I'll also, I'll say the, the prompt one more time and then I'll go down the list. Please check all the boxes that describe the ways you currently receive information from Long Beach Unified School District from the district office or your local schools. First, we've got printed newsletters or flyers. We have e-newsletters. We have automated phone calls. Automated emails. Those are kind of your, your auto emails through school messenger. Automated phone calls are your uh, school messenger phone calls that come from either principal or from the district. Down here, we've got text messages, post office mailings, so things from the district that come to your mail, the district website, any type of mobile app, school calendars, digital or other signs on school properties. So if your school has a marquee or some kind of digital signs out front, board meetings, do you get your information from board meetings? Do you get your information from district meetings? Or do you get it from Peach Jar? Oops, there's more. Uh oh, let me go away. District meetings, Peach Jar. What about social media? Do you get your information from social media like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or YouTube? 
What about on television, local news, or newspaper media? Do you get your information about the district from newspapers or TV? And last but not least, there's an option here for I do not receive any information. Now, if that's the case, I hope I hope that's not the case. But if that's the case, we need to talk because we need to do better. All right. So hopefully you've all had a chance to go in and submit your options. I'm gonna let's look at some of the feedback. So right now it looks like text messaging is the top way that that individuals here in this call are getting information from the district. Now it'll be interesting to see, and and we'll. We'll get a lot deeper into this when we do our, our real survey with everyone in Long Beach. But I wonder if you guys are saying that you like text messages more or if that's the way that you actually feel like you are getting the most of our communications. Either way, we do agree here internally that text messages are a great way to communicate with you all. It's quick, it's fast, and, and a lot of times you can take a glimpse at it and decide whether it's something you need to interact with quickly or not. Sometimes it might not be relevant to you and you can go on about your business. But it is good to get text messages about um, about district uh, events or especially emergencies, which we, we don't like to have, but we know that there will be some. So text messages are great. Automated phone calls. It sounds like a lot of you are getting our school messenger automated phone calls. Emails is, is next. So the top four are text messaging, phone calls, emails, and social media. Then below that, newsletters, website, peach jar, and so on. Thank you for that feedback. I still see it moving in real time. So you guys are doing a great job with this Slido. 77% of you get messages via text, which is really cool. All right, I'm gonna give you 10 more seconds to get your data in and then we're gonna to go to the next slide. Let's see if anything else is moving here. Looks like you're all done. All right, very cool. We're gonna go on to the next one. <clears throat> now this one's a little bit different. What are your preferred methods of communication from Long Beach Unified? So we, we asked what your, how you were getting that information from us. Now it's what are your preferred methods of communication from Long Beach Unified School District? So you have your time, go in there and uh, start telling us what your preferred methods are. And this one is actually one where you can type in your own answers. So this isn't a, a, a drop down box or not a check box, not multiple choice. You can type in your own answers and be honest with us. When you get notifications from the district or from your school, which ways do you want to get it from us? Now, there are 11 answers so far. So um, I'll keep as soon as they come in, I'll kind of scroll. But right now we're seeing text messages, Instagram and emails as the top. I mean, that's that seems like that's it. OK, we've got a phone social media, text, emails. This is really neat. It's really great to see your feedback coming in in real time. Sounds like we've got some uh, millennials in the group who just wanna get all their information via social media, which is amazing. Text, email, text and emails. I would try to read the one in Spanish, but I don't wanna embarrass myself. I'm working on, I'm working on my accent, but but thank you for the uh, for the the Spanish um, input as well. Really appreciate it. Text message, emails. <laughs> Someone said any as long as it's timely. That is actual and factual. I like that. Text messages are easiest to stay on top of. Not automated Canvas emails. <laughs> Someone said I wish my son would communicate. I gotcha. All right, we're getting personal here. All right, we're going to move on to the next one. Thank you guys so much for this feedback. Go ahead. I'll give you guys five more seconds to get it in. We got 28 responses out of 66 of you. So 40 of you are not responding. Go ahead and go to that, uh, go to that QR code. I feel like I'm on QVC right now, but um, go to that QR code, guys, and, and sign in so we can get more responses. All right, thank you to all 28 of you who responded to that one. Next question. Okay, sorry. Here we go. Drag your drag to rank your top options. When do you prefer to attend LBUSD or your school meetings? So this is more a question of we're trying to decide, does it make sense to have these meetings in the evenings, evenings on weekdays like today? What about on weekends? Would you come out on a weekend morning to a Long Beach Unified meeting? 
Um, what about the afternoons on the weekends? So you, what you're going to do is you're going to take it and drag your, your ideas from one to four, put number one at the top, whichever one you like the most, put it at the top. And then whichever one you don't like, put it at the bottom. So there we go. You guys can see it. It's active. It's changing right now. I'm actually surprised that it looks like weekdays in the mornings are leading. So some of you are saying that the best time to have a meeting would be in the mornings on weekdays. And then the next best option is weekdays in the evenings. <clears throat> weekdays in the evenings has now taken the top spot, but it, it's really great that we're getting this feedback from you. So we've got about 11 responses so far. Give you guys another 15 to 20 seconds. So go ahead and drag your options. And then when you're done, press submit. All right, five more seconds, guys. All right, thank you so much for that feedback. This is super helpful, helpful to us as we think about when to have these meetings. and. And to hear that that a lot of you would would appreciate a a, a morning um, weekday meeting that's actually really a uh, really interesting feedback. So thank you so much for that. We've got about 19. Can we get up to 20? One more person who hasn't done it. Go ahead and put your feedback. There we go. All right. So I believe this might be the last question, but I'm going to go on to the next question. You also here we go. We're up to 22. Thank you all so much. All right. Next question. Next question is how, this is also one where you can put your own answer in, but just give us some ideas on how we can best get more parents involved in Long Beach Unified programs and meetings. It's always, uh, it's always tough as we, you know, our, our different departments that work with parent engagement, we want you to come out. And sometimes we, we send out invitations and we send them all, all over the place and we might get 15 to 20 people to show up. So we're asking you. What can we do to make these meetings more enticing, to make them more attractive for you to join us? Somebody said by asking us, which is, which is, it sounds basic, but that actually makes a lot of sense. We need to get the information out to you so that you know that the information, so that, sorry, that you know that the meetings and the events are, are happening. Someone said personal invitations from the principal or school leaders. I love that. Stipends, gift cards, and incentives. We are working on that. So that, that is great feedback. Hybrid meetings, on-site and or remote. Love that. Sending flyers home. So I'm just put question mark. So we're wondering how we can get more of you involved. So if you were working here at the district office and you said, we got to have a meeting and we want to get 100 people in the room, what would you do to get that many people in the room? <laughs> Someone said, oh, my gosh, I just got a call from the school. Yes, let us know. That's great timing. Um, placing invitations on the website in a very visible, visible and in inviting way. Free dress days for kids, inviting us on social media, leadership development skills. It sounds like someone's asking for an actual session on leadership development, which I like that. Uh, well, what happened? Okay, there we go. Someone said dinner. That's the one I was waiting for. <laughs> food. We love food. I think this is a great meeting. I wish more people would come. What about raffling off a gift card, people? Yes, that goes back to the incentives piece, which I love. Coffee, dinner. You guys are coming up with some great ideas. Uh, let's let's get a few more. We've got 12 of you, 12 responses, and I know that there's at least 20 who are, who are working really hard to give us some feedback here. Sending more information about the events or meetings. Yep, outreach. Extra credit for kids. All right, we got to talk to Dr. Baker about that one. <laughs> <clears throat> Remote meetings so they don't interfere with kids with kids' care and work. Digital ads about the events like on Facebook, absolutely. Cultural events, yes. Snacks. Trying to read the Spanish, but I will have my colleagues translate that for me so I can understand what it means. Uh, Zoom meetings and flyers, yes. Quick text reminders to all parents. Um, yes, this person is very astute. They said this has been a challenge for more than 30 years. Maybe get the kids more involved and we'll keep the parents involved. All right. I'm seeing more about food. I like those people who are talking about food. 
Moderate for negativity so that I'm willing to come back. That is a great point. We want to make sure that these meetings are positive and productive. Um, but when it comes to the communications, I am also a realist, so I'm okay with you guys giving us some pretty, uh, your honest feedback. Live stream in some way so others can view. I keep clicking the screen, sorry guys. Um, raffle small gift cards. Okay, we got 24 responses. That one seemed pretty popular, so thank you guys so much for that. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and, oh, we got parent student projects, hybrid meetings. Yeah, we're getting some great feedback on this one. I'll leave this one open. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen, but you all can continue to, to type in your answers. I know it takes a little bit longer to think about it than type your answers in. But I'm going to go ahead and stop the screen share, continue to give us your feedback. Thank you so, so much. And um, I just want to say that that this was just an idea that, that I worked on with the team so that we could get your feedback in real time. Um, last time... It, and it's actually a result of what happened last time. Last time I put some questions out there and the questions that I asked, we didn't have a great way to get the feedback back in from you. So you had to go to the, the Google form and answer some of my questions, but they weren't really there. The prompt wasn't there. So the idea behind this was that we really wanted to make sure that you had an opportunity to give us your feedback on the spot in real time. And right now we've got some really, really great feedback. In fact, somebody just said, the best way to get more people involved in LBUSD programs is that a famous person comes to the meeting. So I'll go through, <laughs> I'll go through my phone and see if I can get Will Smith on the line and bring him to this, uh, to this meeting the next time. No promises though. Um, but anyway, thank you all so much. Um, this is just the early stages. This is just the beginning of us really working hard with you, the members of the community, um, to make sure that we're communicating with you the best possible. And from what I see, you guys have some really, really great ideas. And so I'm looking forward to continually uh, just engaging with you and learning from you what you think can help us be better communicators. So thank you all so much. Um, I'm going to give it back to Alyssa. I know Dr. Baker is still on. We got Alyssa still here. So um, thank you all for the time. And Alyssa, back to you. Justin, I have to say that was super cool. I don't know if that's that the right fun, word right? to use anymore, but that was so fun. <laughs> I was texting with Rebecca from Perry University, and we're going to totally hijack that idea. So, absolutely, you know, really some of the engaging. young people say some of the young people will say it was lit. The lit, okay. Was, Set me straight, uh, Justin. I need to help. Thank you, <laughs> <laughs> Dr. <clears throat> Baker and Mr. Grayson. We are just really grateful for your time with us tonight. Are there any parting comments you'd like to share, uh, Dr. Baker, with our parents and our caregivers in YouTube land? Sure. Just a couple of closing things, Alyssa. First of all, that was lit, Mr. Grayson. <laughs> I love that. And we'll look for Will Smith on the next for the next parent connection. Maybe we should start with a gift card for participants the next time. So we'll have some way of tracking or allowing you to sign in, even if we're in virtual space, and we'll raffle off a, a couple of gift cards. I can commit to that. I don't know about Will Smith. <laughs> to answer an additional question that was passed to me about the wellness centers um the question was keeping students in mind and uh, they were the, the, they were saying there could be a stigma with using the wellness centers how are these centers marketed to students and that's a really wise question from a parent or caregiver um what I would want to tell you is the students are participating in marketing their own wellness centers. Um, and it's why I encourage you to go visit them because they, they are so student friendly and frankly, they do not have a stigma attached. I did share that there are snacks. There are also games and other ways that create this peaceful place for students. So there, um, some of the ways that the schools have brought students in, remember 5,700 students went into a wellness center in the month of November. That's awesome. So what we know is students bring their friends. And if they're nervous about going to the wellness center, we have encouraged them to bring a friend and check it out. The wellness centers have hosted different versions of open houses and they've gone out and you know had trusted students that are advisors to other students go get other students to bring them in. They post a QR code for suggestions about the wellness center. So students don't actually have to even tell an adult what their suggestion is. Just like Mr. Grayson posted that QR code for you to use. Some of the schools are using that as a way to take student input about their wellness center. So I'll definitely pass on the suggestion to keep students in mind. But what I can tell you is I think that those social workers, counselors, 
um, psychologists and their teacher supporters and administrators are really centering students in thinking about the wellness centers. The last thing I wanted to remind you is to ask your students or to at your schools to ask questions about wellness and social emotional learning so that you feel connected to what your school actually has going on in terms of social emotional learning and wellness. And I wanted to really encourage you to use the Google form for suggestions and questions. Some of the ideas that were activated upon tonight, as Mr. Grayson shared, are things that we're able to do without waiting. We had a suggestion from one of our participants last month about creating a parent, a parent group for parents of LGBTQIA plus identifying students and able to activate on that. So some things don't take time, some things do take time, but we just really encourage you to bring your ideas forward into this parent connection. And just also want to remind you that we're so fortunate to be connected with Parent University, because if you have a question that goes into that Google form, you will get a response. It may not be tonight. They've been working hard all day, but it will be within the next couple of days. And so no question is a dumb question. Please make sure that, you, that you're asking if you have something that you'd like to know. So I just want to thank you again before I pass back to Alyssa for being connected to us and making the time tonight. Um, I think there are several hundred of you, if I look across the different channels for YouTube watching, and what we also know is that this session can be viewed um, on our YouTube channel even after tonight when it's not live. So thank you, parents and caregivers, and those of you who are supporters of students in our district. I'm so glad to be directly connected to you in this way, and I won't see you in parent connection before the winter break. So I wish you a quiet and safe and healthy holiday season, whatever you're celebrating in your home, or if you just have your children home with you and you're not celebrating, but you have an opportunity to be together and to rest. Thank you. Thank you so much again, Dr. Baker, Mr. Grayson for being here. And thank you parents and caregivers for allowing us into your home and sharing some time with us this evening. And we look forward to seeing you next Tuesday, December 14th um, at our Parent University Workshop. Have a blessed night. Take care.